Again, the romance of Helen Trent. Helen, as chief gown designer for Continental Studios, is on location now in Clover Village, Texas. In the home of Miss Nellie Webster, who is boarding a number of the Hollywood people, Helen has set up a wardrobe department, and she has become quite fond of Miss Nellie's 18-year-old niece, Betsy, who is acting as Helen's helper. Lawrence Post, the star of the picture, has been giving Betsy a determined rush since his arrival in Clover Village. And Helen is rather worried about the dangerous combination of Betsy's naivete and Lawrence's none-too-savory reputation. It is just after breakfast this morning, as we look in on the small back sitting room of Miss Nellie's home, Helen speaks to Verlaine Lafferty, her wardrobe woman. Listen. Good morning, Verlaine. Good morning, Mrs. Trent. We sure got a lot of work staring us in the face today. That mob scene they're shooting this morning is going to be a headache. Oh, don't I know it. Has the truck come for the costumes? I'm waiting for it now. Well, you go out to location on the truck, and I'll be along in a little while. Oh, and one thing especially, Verlaine. Yeah. When you give out the straw hats to the extras, tell each one as you give him his hat to bend it or even tap it so all the hats won't look brand new and just alike. Okay. Tell them to get their hats dirty or rip off a piece of the brim or stick a pipe in the hat band or drop some of the hats in the mud. You know, they'll think of things. Sure, I'll tend to everything, Mrs. Trent. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you here helping me, Verlaine. Oh, I don't mind telling you. There's plenty of times I wish I was back in the workroom at your dress shop. This rustic life is no bed of roses. You don't like Clover Village at all, do you? It's okay, I guess, but I'll be glad to get home. I like my own bed and my own coffee and plenty of hot water whenever I want it. To get a bath around here, you practically have to put in a reservation four hours ahead. I know. It is inconvenient with so many of us here in this old house. Oh, um, incidentally, uh, Casanova made a few cracks about you at the breakfast table a while ago. You mean Lawrence Post? Yeah. I'm afraid you got him plenty gripe telling him to lay off a of Betsy. What did Lawrence say about me, Verlaine? Oh, he... Oh, just a couple of digs. Mr. Powers was saying something about being manager of the company, and Lawrence said, Oh, I thought Helen Trent was the manager of the company. She seems to be poking her snoot into everybody's affairs. Something like that. Lawrence said that? Ah, don't pay any attention to him. Oh. Did he... Did he keep Betsy out late last night, Verlaine? Did she sneak out to meet him again? Yeah, she Julietted down the back steps and got in his car, but... She didn't stay out till daybreak, as usual. She was in about 3 o'clock this morning. Verlaine, Betsy isn't going to come to any good or find any happiness with Lawrence. Maybe I am interfering where I shouldn't. But, well, I'm going to take some action now. Like what? Well, Betsy won't listen to anything I say, and neither will Lawrence. So there's nothing for me to do but tell Miss Nellie that Lawrence isn't the sort of person Betsy should be seeing. That'll be a shock to her. Lawrence has got Miss Nellie thinking he's as wholesome for Betsy as milk toast. She don't even know Betsy's in love with that beautiful heel. Well, she'll have to know soon, I'm afraid. I'm very fond of Betsy, and well, I, I feel it's my responsibility to look out for her in this particular instance. I guess I might as well speak to Miss Nellie now before I go out to location and stay all day. Well, I think I saw her going into the living room a few minutes ago. Thanks, Verlaine. I'll see you later on the set. Okay. Oh, good morning, Miss Nellie. Well, how are you today, Helen? Goodness, what's all that? Christmas coming again? No. I'm just sitting here looking at all my nice greeting cards that came in the morning's mail. Today's my 50th birthday. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Why, I've never seen such a batch of cards. Well, the folks in town here are mighty sweet and thoughtful of me, I will say. I've taught nearly everybody in town in school at one time or another. I was principal of the school for so long, you know. Looks to me like you were a popular principal. Well, I tried to mix a lot of other things with my work besides teaching and discipline. Aren't these pretty handkerchiefs here for the minister's wife? She sent them over a while ago. Oh, they're lovely. And some blackberry jelly from Martha Haskins. And this cross-stitch table runner from Flo Cousin Florrie. Oh, nice. Let me wish you a happy birthday, Miss Nellie. Oh, thank you, Helen. My birthdays are always happy, it seems. Well... Is your end of this moving picture coming along all right? Fine. We have a very busy day ahead today. All the ladies you've got sewing for you over in the West Wing say such nice things about you, Helen. That costume department of yours is a regular community affair. The ladies are so pleased to have the work. Well, they're doing very well. I couldn't ask for better seamstresses. 
Did you drive out to Thunder Dam last night to see it lit up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gil Whitney drove me out. He's such a handsome, distinguished-looking man, Mr. Whitney. Well, we parked on that bluff above the dam and looked down. It's a very thrilling sight at night. Yes. Uh, I thought mm. I saw Betsy and Lawrence out there. On the bluff? In Lawrence's automobile, you mean? Yes. Oh, no, I'm sure you didn't. Lawrence drove Betsy over to Kingsville to the picture show last night. They were back here by 11 o'clock. You must have seen some other couple. Perhaps. I think it's mighty sweet of Lawrence to take the trouble to be so nice to Betsy. He says he's got a sister her age that he's mighty crazy about. I see. I guess those men who are movie stars get real tired of that life in Hollywood. So many women chasing them all the time. Lawrence says it's such a relief to be down here. Why... Well, I... I certainly hope Betsy won't fall for him like so many others do. Oh, mercy, no. Betsy wouldn't think of it. She's too sensible for that. I'm real proud of the child. She's a home girl, perfectly content with Clover Village. And she hasn't any special talents, so she hasn't any desire to go away and make a career for herself. I see. Betsy will marry some nice boy from town, or one of the towns around here, and have babies and make a home. That's the life for a child of her temperament. Well, Miss Nellie, uh, there's something I want to talk to you about. Yes? Well, what is it, Helen? Well, I I don't like to have to bring up... Dear Lynn, well, will you look who's coming up the walk out there? Where in the world has Bud Stevens come from? Is that Bud Stevens? It most assuredly is. Here, let me go call Betsy right quick. But I thought he'd gone to the West Indies to take that oil job and he'd be gone four years. Well, I thought so myself. Something must have happened if he's come back so soon. Excuse me, will you, Helen? Oh, yes, of course. Go right ahead, Miss Nellie. Betsy! Oh, Betsy! You want me, Aunt Nellie? Come down, honey. Bud's here. Bud? He certainly is. Well, Bud Stevens, where on earth did you come from? Good morning, Miss Nellie. Betsy here? She's coming down the steps now. Come on in, Bud. What are you doing back in town? I'm mighty glad to see you. We missed you a lot. Well, I, I guess I'm back to stay, Miss Nellie. Hello, Bud. Well, hi, Bet. How are you? What are you doing in Clover Village? Well, I might as well tell the truth about it. My job fell through. Huh? Oh, fell through? How? Oh, I just didn't make the grade, that's all. I got down there to Galveston to take those examinations, and I was up against a lot of fellows that had graduated in industrial chemistry, and... Well, I only had those two years at college, and I wasn't as good as they were. I lost out. Oh, what a pity, Bud. Well, don't worry. You'll get another chance. You studied so much for those exams, though. Studying out of books at home is not the same as getting it at college. I found that out. Well, gee, Bud, that's too bad. Oh, I'm real sorry. Thank you, Miss Nellie. Nothing to be sorry about. I guess a fella gets what he's good enough to get, and that's all. Have you told your folks yet? Oh, no. I, uh, I just walked up from the station. Stop to see Betsy and tell her. Well, come on out in the dining room in a few minutes and have a cup of coffee with me, will you, Bud? I'll put some fresh on the stove. You... You ashamed of me, Bet? No. No, of course not. You're looking at me kind of funny. You don't say anything. I, uh, bought you these presents in Galveston. It's a scar. Blue. The same color as your eyes, almost. Thank you, Bud. And a box of candy. I wish I could have brought something awful pretty, but my money was low after I bought my train ticket home. Oh, thank you for... for both presents. You're not so glad to see me, are you? Well, well, sure, sure I am. I was talking to Pete Hicks down at the station. He said you're keeping company with this movie fellow, Lawrence Post. Is that right? Lawrence and I are very good friends. Oh. I'm... I'm sorry you were disappointed about your job in the West Indies, bud, but... But I guess I might, te might as well tell you right now. What? Someday, when you get sophisticated, you'll find out that you just can't walk off and leave a girl and expect her to feel the same about you when you choose to come back. Everybody in town made fun of me when you left, and, and the girl snickered at me and all that, and, and I hated you, and, and I still do. You don't mean that, Betsy. I do so, too. And please don't come around here bothering me, because I'm very busy day and night. I'm, I'm secretary and an assistant to Mrs. Strength, the famous Hollywood gown designer. You, you work for her at night, too? <laughs> Don't be so unsophisticated, Bud. At night, I have other fish to fry. That's the way it is from now on. 